excited to be with you right now for this particular episode. Listen, we're going to take you into what it's like to be a truly competitive golfer, um, high level competitor. The, the gentleman that we have with us today recently placed in the top five of the 2024 PGA Collegiate Works Championship that was played at uh, the TPC of Sawgrass, also known as a home of the Players Championship on the PGA Tour. We're going to have a really insightful conversation of how do you get from junior golfer to competitive college golfer to someone who is literally on the doorstep of being a professional golfer. We are honored today to have with us one of the shining young stars in the sport of golf, um, Kenyan American, Dalton State golfer here in the state of Georgia, Steve Kabari. Steve, welcome to the T Degree in Golf podcast. We are thrilled to have you with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's going to be a wonderful conversation. And listen, as I said earlier, congratulations. I just talked to you as you were coming in. I literally was on an airplane watching you finish uh, finish your final round at TBC Sawgrass, and you were making a run at Marcus Taylor. Uh, the Golf Channel, Golf Channel recognized that because you got some pretty good coverage there. So, congratulations on that top five. Thank you, thank you. Before we get into the conversation, just take a moment, introduce the TD Green Golf Podcast community to Steve Kabari. Who are you? Where are you from? And anything else that you want us to know? Yeah, uh, my name is Steve Kabari. I'm from Canton, Georgia. Played out at Bridgemont Athletic Club growing up and, um, you know, play golf at Dalton State uh, College. Been there all four years and just grew up loving golf since I think I started right, right around when I was six. Didn't really start taking okay. it serious until I was probably 12 or 13. Um, but other than that, yeah. There we go. Uh, shout out to Bridgemont Athletic Club. Uh, I am familiar with Bridgemont as well. And also the good people there. Um, as well as Canton, Georgia. So let's let's stay there. I think you did a, a moment of, of reflection and recollection. And, and so talk to us about when you started golf and why was it golf? Were there any other sports? And so take us to the beginning of the journey. Right. So probably picked up a club right when I was around four. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So... Um, my dad always used to go to the range and so okay. I'd always like, I'd always like to go with him and, um, it was pretty much a call from the beginning. I didn't really okay. play. I played soccer also when I was six, seven years old, but, okay. um, it was pretty much golf. Yeah. My dad went to the range. I'd always want to go with him. Um, my mom put, started putting me in tournaments when I was around six years old, uh, us kids golf. Okay. Um, and then I just kind of did that in soccer up until I was like 10 and then from there, I I chose golf. Uh, I love soccer. I like soccer when I was that age. Um, I do remember like playing in my playing my very last soccer match or game. Uh, it was middle of the summer. It was probably like a hundred and something <laughs> degrees. And you know, from then for we were playing on grass the whole time. This was our first time playing on turf. So okay. Uh, obviously the turf gets really, really hot. Yes, it does. And my feet were just burning. <laughs> and so I think we ended up losing that game. And, you know, I walk off the, I walk off the field and I was like, tell him, I was like, this is a lot. I can't do this. <laughs> my feet hurt so much. This is the last time I'm ever playing soccer again. And it's from, so from then on it was golf and, uh, and then, you know, played rec basketball high school in high school just to keep me active, mm -hmm. but, uh, in the winter, but other than that, no, it's just simply golf. So kudos to Mr. and Mrs. Kabari for supporting Steve at an early age. As we've had episodes, particularly in season two, 2024, we continue to talk about the need for parental support or a community or a small team, if you will. Um, also, again, continue recognition to Bridge Mill. They have an amazing program for kids. Uh, and do an amazing job of keeping them engaged and building on the skill sets and, and getting them to the point where we see a Steve Kabari in front of us today. Steve, what, what, 
what I've learned, and I think this is true for most athletes, um, you know, early in their journey, is that there comes a point when a decision is made. And for you, it was soccer and golf, but it tended to became golf. Aside from the turf and the 100-degree heat that your last soccer game was a part of, why golf? What was it that you sit back and you said, Mom and Dad, I'm going all in right here. What was it about golf that just locked you in at 10 years of age? I think I just loved it. You know, I think I was, I think I was better at soccer than I was at golf mm. for as long as I can remember. I could fact check with my parents, but I think I was. Um, you know, I just, I just love golf. I like, I like the community around it, the friends mm. that it gave me, the, uh, all the relationships I have made through that. Everybody that I, everybody that I'm friends with now, mm -hmm. um, I was friends with when I was 12, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old when I started, yeah. when I started and those friendships have lasted all this way. And I think I just like the, you know, golf is such an unknown sport. You know, you can Correct. go, you can go out there one day and it's not going to be your best day. You go out there the next day, it's the, one of the best days you've ever had. And I think I just love that part of the game. Just, you can never get satisfied pretty much. And, you know, I guess like a sport like soccer, like you can be, you can be good. Like you can yep. definitely be talented, more talented and better than other players. But in golf, you can have a Joe Schmo that will come out there and, you know, may, he's probably like a five handicap and he goes out there and, you know, he has one of his best days and he's going to go out there and shoot a 69 when you play and practice every single day and it may not be your day and you go out there and shoot a 73 and you're like, dude, what the heck? Right. But yeah, um, but I just think I just like the unknown of the game of golf. Well, you know, I often talk about paperclip moments in my episodes and I think that you just touched on one. One of the things that, you know, Steve just taught, talked about, but it's not unique to being 10 or 12 it's also applicable to being 24 or 34 or 44 is that the sport allows you to build camaraderie. The sport allows you to build relationships. And so your relationships are going to be lasting and they'll build off of that. And for those of us that are in our adult lives, uh, the sport is a great one. And I'm sure that many of our listeners have built relationships through playing. Um, but for those of you that have not, if you're looking to build a network uh, oftentimes a, a network of aligned thinking, aligned minded people uh, with some variation, then golf certainly is a wonderful platform to begin to build a network of people around and, and, and kind of Steve has given us the range of, of, of opportunity and possibility within that. Steve, as you probably know, you know, I did a little bit of, of research on understanding who Steve Kabari is and, and getting us to where we are today. One of the things that I admire about you um, is, and, and before I get to the question, I often talk to non-athletes, and I play basketball growing up and, and had a chance to play professional basketball as, the, as my college career was ending. Um, we are entertainers, and the, the, the general public views athletes as entertainers, and right or wrong, see us as kind of a one-track individual. Right. Um, I defend athletes and help people understand that athletes are human beings first. What I noticed on your social media site is that you profoundly talk about your faith. Can you help us understand how important your faith is to who you are as a person and then the role that it has played or is playing in Steve Kabari, the athlete, i.e. the golfer? Right. <coughs> so um, probably believed in Jesus for as long as I can remember, been baptized and all. But my faith didn't really start taking like a toll on myself until November of last year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm still new on this journey, mm. but um, I think it happened. It all really happened last last semester, beginning of the fall. Um, 
I knew where I wanted to be at the end of this year, and that was to turn pro. Um, I didn't know how I was going to get there, mm -hmm. but I just knew that's what I wanted to do. And I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform well and to prove to myself that this is what I want to do. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of made it seem like, okay, this is like a make it or break it year. Like, okay. And uh, if I don't perform well, then I'm probably going to have to rethink it and not do it. And But mm -hmm. like, if I perform well, then I'm going for it. And, uh, you know, I probably had one of the worst one of the worst semesters I've probably ever had. And so as a golfer, as a golfer. Okay. And, um, so, you know, I just, you know, I'm just start rethinking this whole thing. And, uh, you know, I have the, I have the Southwest showcase coming up in November at Cedar Crest. And I really did not want to play in it because of how bad I'd played, uh, in the, in the fall. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think my parents just pushed it on me. They're like, no, you need to go play. This will be a good, great opportunity for you. Uh, you don't know what can happen when you get there. And so, um, I know I have a buddy of mine, his name's, uh, David Ford and, uh, he plays at UNC. Yep. 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 Uh, he is, he's a big follower in Christ and I look up to him in that way. And one of the, you know, he's been on many podcasts and stuff. And one of the, one of the things that he says that calms him down when he's on the golf course, he, he says that whenever, if you ever see him standing over a shot for a long time or like just standing behind it, it's because he's, you know, reciting a, a Bible verse mm -hmm. to calm him down. Because, you know, when he's over that shot, he says that the Lord, the Lord's thought is better than your own thought. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, wow, that. That's very true. So, you know, I'm going into this, I'm going into this tournament at, at, uh, at Cedar Crest. And, you know, I'd seen that like months, months prior to that. And so, you know, I go there, uh, you know, first, you know, I get into the first round and, you know, I'm not playing well, like the way I've been playing all semester. You know, I look at the leaderboard all of a sudden through like 10 or 12 holes, I'm like, tied for last i'm like oh my <laughs> gosh i'm so now i'm starting to freak out like okay, okay i've never been tied for last before like <laughs> this is new so i'm starting to freak out get on the 13th hole just hit this tee shot dead left i'm like okay we've got to we've got to do something here yeah, and so yeah. i thought of what david had said and you know what mm. what calms him down and uh and you know i'm like looking up on my phone and i'm like bible verse to calm you down mm. i think i find uh it's a verse in Deuteronomy, Deut Deuteronomy 31 something. Okay. But um, I find it and, you know, I think that it was, I think it was the first time ever I've ever felt on a golf course to where all the pressure has been lifted off yeah. my shoulders. Yeah. And it like, I, I went from like, I went from, I guess, like trying to be in control to letting it go, letting it go. I'm no longer in control. And and, you know, I duck. It's it's a short par four too. It's supposed to be drivable. And I have 210 yards into it, and I'm standing over this six iron. I'm like, and I'm like, holy cow! Like, I don't think I can hit this shot bad, you know. And it's a skinny, mm. and it's a skinny green, and uh, I'm just like, I don't think I can hit a bad shot here. And so, you know, I finished the I finished the end of the round at from holes what 13 to 18. I play them at two or three under. Nice. I end up shooting three over on that round, and. Uh, I kind of kept that Bible verse with me for the rest of the tournament, you know, I ended up playing well. And it's, and it's when that I started starting to think about how I can, how I can transfer my faith into my golf game. Mm -hmm. And so a couple weeks later, I'm going, yeah, a couple weeks later, I go over to my girlfriend's house, you know, it was for Thanksgiving because my parents were out of town. Mm -hmm. And so I spent Thanksgiving with her and, you know, we went to church and, um, one thing the pastor had said is, you know, everyone seems to have God number one, you know, family number two, and then like, for example, football number three. So, you know, he was saying, not only do you want to have the Lord at the top, you want to have the Lord in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. So if it's Lord at the top, family at two, you want to have the Lord in your family. You want to have the mm -hmm. Lord in your football life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really started thinking about that. It's okay. Yeah, it is Lord at the top of family at two and probably golf at three. Mm -hmm. And so um, one thing that came up to me was how can I, how can I get the Lord in my, in my golf game? Right. Uh, or how, yeah, how can I grow my faith in my golf game? And so that's one thing that, well, that's one thing I did, uh, kept on doing like the, you know, 
oh, in whatever book I'm reading in the Bible uh, leading up to that week, I'll find a Bible verse that just ran, uh, that just yeah that just comes to me, and that's what yep. I'll use for that following tournament, and that and that'll help me calm down. And so going into the fall, a thing of mine was. I'm not going to put any unnecessary, unnecessary pressure on myself. Oh. I'm just going to go out there and let it go. And I think, like, if this is meant to be, this is meant to be. Yeah. And um, there are a lot of things on the line for that spring, so there was no reason to put pressure on myself. I just, you know, I just prayed every, every. I have, yeah, I pray every Sunday for for the following week, and oh. and that's what I just kept on doing, and um, it's brought me this far. That that's awesome, Steve. And listen, kudos to David Ford. Um, I have followed David uh, probably for the past year, year and a half, and I think Hunter introduced me to David, or at least made me aware of him. Um, I, I think that's powerful that you have a peer, essentially, uh, a good buddy that is helping you grow in a way that will have sustainable impact right. for you going forward. Uh, I like the marriage of your faith in everything that you do, and Clearly, that came from the time that you spent with your girlfriend, her family, and in a church. So I think um, that is is powerful. Um, I, I do want to dive back into something that you said. You know what we'll learn and continue to learn is you are an accomplished golfer. Um, coming out of last year, you created this aspirational goal, and that was pro golf. What was it about that goal that created a little bit of instability in you going into the fall of your senior year? Because up to that point, you did well enough to allow that goal to become a goal or to allow right. pro to become aspirant. So talk to us about how that happened. And, and we know in part that your spirituality, your faith has kind of made this a reality for you, but what changed? I think that, you know, pro golf has always been a dream of mine and I always want to yeah. do it. And I think, you know, coming to my senior year, it was like, I think it finally like hit me. I'm like, okay, okay. this is my, this is my last year to, I want to say prove to myself, but maybe like if I deep down, it was maybe to prove to others that I can actually do this. Right. And, um, I think I put that pressure on myself where in years before I didn't put that pressure on yeah. myself. Cause yeah, I was like, yeah. yeah, I want to play pro golf. Like when the time comes I'll it'll come and that's what I'll be doing. Right. And so then the time is actually nearing right. in like the next 10, 11 <laughs> months. And now all of a sudden it's like, Holy cow. Like I, like I need to, I need to play well. And instead of me saying I needed to play well, it's, I should have just done what I did all along, just not to put any pressure on myself and just believe in, my abilities to do it like I have in recent years. You know, if I ever had a bad stretch, I never thought anything about it, you know? Right. I was just like, well, this is golf. Like everyone has, everyone has bad stretches of golf. And I think I just took this bad stretch of golf to like an extreme, like, you know, bad stretch. I'm like, okay, well, maybe golf isn't for me. Okay, thank you. So, Steve, one of the things that I'm learning um, is that the podcast is listened to by adults and their children and or other children, but but the audience is broad. For those children who are Steve Kabari's to come, what would you say to them from six to let's say eighteen? Or let's say 6 to 21, your junior year, maybe your sophomore year. What would you say to them to focus on to ultimately become a Steve Gabari as it relates to golf? Right. I would say number one is to have fun. You always have to have fun. You know, once you start taking it seriously, it doesn't get as fun anymore. Put it that way. And that's from experience of last of last fall and uh number two i'd say um you know just work hard if i think if there's something i wish i went i did a lot more when i was a junior was to work very hard like i think i you know i work a lot harder now than i did then but like i still think i worked somewhat hard not hard enough i tell you that but yeah. 
especially in the ages between 12, 13 to 15, 16 to your sophomore year in high school, like those are the years that you should work as hard as you possibly can if you want to make a name for yourself and go to a go to a very good school golf wise let's stay there um, let me let me because that period is oftentimes really when teenage years hit right and when teenage years hit and i'm an 18 year old teenage years hit teens want to begin to find their own selves right and that is part of the journey but becoming a considered and accomplished athlete requires you to do some things or sacrifice some things that teenagers do exactly so so continue your answer but continue it from the perspective of sacrifice and investment and commitment right yeah i mean you have to you have to sacrifice a lot. And that's like hanging out with friends and stuff. Yep. That was hard. Yep. That was, yep. there were times that more times than not, I would want to hang out with my friends. Absolutely. And, you know, I had older people then, I had older people like telling me like, don't do it, you know, practice hard. Yep. Like you like, you, you will not regret at the end. And, you know, like, and you know, they're right. Yep. especially in those in those in those years like you if you really want it like you one you have to love it right and yeah. you have to because if you don't love the game then you're not going to you're not going to be driven Correct. as much Correct. but if you really love it and it's what you want to do and if you're at that young of an age saying i want to play on the pj tour one day you really have to sacrifice those what five years yep um to be where you want to be because for a lot of if you look at all the top amateurs now a lot of them gave up those five years when they were in that age in that age gap, and that's why they're where mm -hmm. they are now. Um, so for someone like me, I didn't really sacrifice those five years then. Instead, you know, mine were on the back end. Mm -hmm. You know, it was when I was like, it's when I was like sixteen, sophomore. Yeah, I was sophomore in high school when I was like, okay, like I really need to start yeah, working hard now, yeah. and I did, and I think that's why I was. Uh, I was a late bloomer in high school, you know, yeah. I didn't get that good until the end of my high school career. And, you know, I remember looking back, I was like, man, only if I did that back when I was 13 or 12, yep. because if I could get, if I got that good in what, two years from yeah. sophomore to senior year, yeah. what could it have been in the five years? Right. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, that you, you just have to sacrifice not willing to, you know, hang out with friends and, and other other things pretty much so really important exchange between steve and i right there i think the other thing and steve has talked about this he he had supportive parents that's an impo important part of the journey but for those parents allow your child to have fun let's not be one of these parents that shows up on the national news or shows up infamously on YouTube, really stepping and vicariously living through your child and, and creating a memory for your child that is one of embarrassment and, and, and really not moving in the direction. Um, I think the other piece that maybe I'm picking up on here, Steve, is though you started late, uh, I personally am familiar with the quality program that Bridge Mill has. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that you've been affiliated with Bridge Mill for as long as you have, I think that's the other piece. If you do, do decide to commit late in that journey, align yourself with a high quality program right. that right. could get you to grinding and grinding in the right area. Right. Um, really, really good answer. To the Tita Green Golf Podcast community, you know that I talk about paperclip moments, and this is really a paperclip moment for parents and children who are defining their passion and affinity for the sport of golf. Steve, we are also in a period right now where there are some really major initiatives, and the USGA seems to be leading the way 
with the support of the LPGA, with the support of the PGA, and these other governing bodies in the U.S. It's a growing the game initiative. And the, the commissioner has talked about growing the game from the perspective of increasing the percentage of women in the sport, but also increasing the participation rate of communities of color. Right. As a Kenyan American, playing golf in the U.S., talk to us about how you see your role in this growing the game initiative positively affecting the sport of golf right now. <coughs> yeah, so I think that I have or that I am coming up at a interesting time and also a very interesting very good time as well because mm -hmm. now you know it gives people like gives people like me to you know to go out there and and make it on tour right mm -hmm. like for example they have the APGA tour and the benefits that they bring to the mm -hmm. table um i think it's showcasing more of colored people that they actually have the game or yep. some at least most of them have the game and yep. um i think it's a great platform for them to go showcase it and everything and all the benefits that comes with them you know when they when they get the call to move up it's not like it's not like what's the word like a handout right it, it's it's with merit right you like you work for that call to get you work to get uh called up correct and when they do get called up it's not it's not like they go and play bad either it's like mm -hmm. they they they're moving up to move mm -hmm. up. Like they, they, they've got game. Um, someone like a good example is Marcus Bird. I think he, when he got when he got his sponsor exemption into the Genesis last year, yep. he played. He played well. Mm -hmm. He made the cut. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I can't really remember how he played on the weekend, but I know he made the cut. You know, usually that's a big thing. It's a huge thing, especially in a field like a field like that. That's a, that's a big field now with their um, elevated events. That's an elevated event. Correct, so he's correct. playing with the best of the best and to make the cup with the best of the best. I mean, it should just show you that you have the game. Absolutely. And then this year, I think it was Chase Johnson. Not only did he make the cut, I think he was the highest finisher and um, ever for, I know the APGA tour. And I think I want to say it was a top 25 if not definitely top 30 okay and um but he made one when, when he made the cut i mean he was right top 15 um mm. and you know i think that's i think what they're doing now is good because before it was very hard for for you know different communities to rate to raise money for themselves to get to where they want to and now that the usga and all and apj is helping with that correct it really shows when you you have the money to back you correct it really shows you, it really gives you the opportunity to showcase your game. Excellent answer. And again, we talk about representation matters. And so as, as Marcus and Chase and yourself continue to show up, and I also think, and we, you and I have talked about this even before we, we, we sat down for this formal conversation, the, the, the coverage that the Golf Channel is giving PGA Collegiate Works, the way that the Golf Channel is now embracing um, more communities who are actively participating to create vitality in the sport, um, including interviews. I think the representation is going to have a direct impact on the Growing the Game initiative, and it's going to impact all of the major governing mm -hmm. bodies, the LPGA, the PGA, the USGA. I know the LPGA has an active active initiative to do exactly the same thing that right. we're talking about. So we know that you're in a place, I think you talked about it being a very interesting, but a very exciting place right now where there's going to be a flood of people that ideally that look like you really, really playing on Sundays and Saturdays yep. going forward. But there's also a group of people behind you that are going to be inspired by you. So very, very interesting time. Um, you know, it's evident that you've improved year over year. And again, this goes back to our conversation even before the microphones were on. Um, you had a really accomplished junior career, including the PGA Junior Boys Championship. 
One of the things that I found interesting about that, and I think this is really, really important, is as you were talking about the experience, um, it sounds like part of what got you to winning that championship was your mother becoming your swing coach. Mm, yeah. I mean, talk about moms. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, is, this is really, really... Yeah. We don't we don't have these documentary types. No. So shout out to Mrs. Yep, Kabari. Shout out mom. Shout out mom. <laughs> uh, probably started what? I think junior what was that? That was my senior year. So junior year. Yeah, 2018 of that summer, you know, it was like the beginning of summer my mom. I was taking lessons from Denise at the time and you know, I was bouncing around also cuz I was I was still trying to find like the next fit for me okay. and so because denise you know she's done a lot for me uh yep. as a junior and she's brought me from point a which was like shooting low 80s to kind of mid 80s all the way bringing me down to shooting mid to low 70s and um you know i was like my bad rounds then at the towards the back end of denise were like 77s and you know and i was trying to find someone like get me to the next to the next point and you know I just couldn't and so my mom was like okay I walked in the house one time and she was like you know what I'm done I'm fed up <laughs> these coaches they cannot seem to get you to the next to the next uh to the next level of your game and so I'm going to get you there and I was like what are you talking about you're gonna get me there? I was like it's like you know hold on does mom play no she did at the time she didn't and so the only thing she did I probably for like the last 10 years, if there was a golf uh, digest magazine that came in, she was reading it from front to back. Ooh. Every single, every single magazine. She could probably recite every single magazine right, ever right. or give me the title. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, that's the only thing that she had was the golf, the golf digest magazines. And so I came in, I came in that day and, you know, she said, I'm fed up, you know, these coaches can't take you to the next level. I'm going to get you there. I was like, no you're not like you I, I, I don't think you know as much as you think you know and then she was like you know she just said I'm gonna do it and so you know I was telling myself I was like okay well I want to prove her wrong here so I'm gonna listen to everything that she says you know and I'm not going to I'm not gonna budge or anything I'm gonna go all in with this because yeah. this is my only option she says I'm done paying I'm done paying lessons for you yeah. like this is it yeah. and so uh we went all in and believe it or not my game actually <laughs> went from shoot my worst rounds being 77 78s to my worst rounds being 74s or 75s you know and um and then i was shooting a lot lower as well yeah so you know when before you know maybe i'd have like a 71 72 with that occasional 70 now it was like now it's like okay i have a 67 here 68 69s a bunch of 69s and 70s and um and this was later on in my high school uh, career. And, you know, I made that jump uh, also in like the junior rankings as well. Um, but yeah, she took over and and did that. Has there been an I told you so moment yet? No, not yet. Good. Okay, but, so, so hopefully she doesn't listen to this episode because yeah. <laughs> it might trigger her to No, say she, that. you know, <laughs> maybe like, maybe subtly. She won't, she won't, yeah. like, she hasn't plan out said, See, I told you, blah blah right. blah, but you know, subtly, it has been like subtly it has been, but you know, I'll, you know, I'm waiting for that moment, yeah. and I, you know, I'll be like, yeah, you were right, yeah, you know, there's nothing I can say that you were right, but um, she has, uh, but now it's uh, she's passed the torch, so now she's telling me she's like, okay, I've brought you here, now it's time for you to go find yeah, someone yeah. that will at really bring you to that next level of. PJ, if, if the PJ is what you want. So we need to get your mother a name, image, and likeness deal with Golf Digest. Because I think the back pages are probably the... the and, and those are the um, the development and the training pages. The yeah, back pages of Golf right, Digest. Yeah. So we need to get Mrs. Kabari an NIL deal with Golf Digest because <laughs> there is proof in the pudding yeah, right Yeah, I was there. about to say, yeah. <laughs> You're not the first person that said that. I think I told that story. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I told that story to... I don't know if you... Scratch Golf. You know, I told that story to them and they said, they said she needs a deal with Golf she needs Digest a deal. If, yeah. if, if she got all her information from Golf Digest. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, we know that, you know, you've got an accomplished career, a, a really accomplished career. 
Um, most recently, you finished top five in the 2024 PGA Collegiate Works. And it was a nice run that you made on that final day, which was the Wednesday. Um, but also in 2023, you were the Southern States Athletic Conference Player of the Year. We've we've gone a little bit into it. You've got a tournament that's coming up, and I think it's the NAIA Nationals. Mm-hmm. So you've got that. Yep. But beyond that, what's next for Steve? Um, I'll be turn pro yep. after after the national championship. I'll turn pro. Nice. Um, you know, qualified for the. Uh, Bridgestone APJ Collegiate Rankings, you know, getting their top five. They have this top five program. And, um, you know, I first heard about it in November when I played at uh, when I played at the Southwest Showcase in C- yeah. at Cedar Crest. And, um, you know, one of their guys, Justin Baker, you know, he emailed my coach about it. My coach sent me an email saying that I qualified for these rankings. And at the time I was ranked six and, you know, top five gets all these benefits. And uh, so my goal uh, for the spring was, you know, to get in the top five, but I was like, and like, you know, it was bunched up too. So like (laughs) between like four five and six, um, it was, it was, it was close. And so, you know, I'm going into it and, uh, I'm like, okay, I, this is a big semester for me. Like Mm -hmm. if I, uh, if I can make this top five, I have a full schedule ahead of me, like nothing to worry about or nothing. If I don't, make it then i'll be looking for like mini tour events to play Mm -hmm. in and stuff and um luckily through uh the grace of god and i was able to play well in the spring and uh get in that top five um and so yeah i'll be playing on their tour this summer um be traveling all over um and then i'll have a apj tour card for through august of 2025 congratulations um, Thank you. That, and that really is the journey. That's the stories that we like to tell uh, on the TD Green Golf Podcast with Victor Patterson. It literally is a beginning to next, I hate to say end because there's so much more beyond that, but it is a dream birthed and in many ways a dream fulfilled. So that is... Um, huge. And we want to congratulate you, uh, Steve, as we get towards the end of each episode, I always ask, how can the T Degree in Golf podcast and its community support Steve Kabari going forward? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I guess just keeping up with me. You know, the next time, next time I want to be on here, I'd like to make my second appearance either being a be, having a Corn Ferry Tour card yeah. or even having a PJ Tour card would, would be even better. So at least I want to, I want a second, I'll say that I want a second appearance on here when I am up there. The door is open. Well, yeah, right. And we will look forward to right. that. Well, it's been an honor today to spend a little bit of time with you. Uh, we know that your time is valuable time, and I think it is even more evident understanding where you are and what you're working towards. So we don't take this lightly. Uh, we certainly are excited about the episode. We know the Tita Green Golf Podcast community will enjoy hearing this episode as well. We wish you the absolute best as you go into the NAI Nationals. Thank you. And Thank then you. you launch into your pro career. Right. Um, we know that you have a social media um, I believe you have an Instagram account, so uh, and I think that's a private account. So be wise in reaching out to Steve and follow him. And then the door is always open. That's right. And so as we close out each episode, um, we always say hit it straight from T to Green. The T to Green Golf Podcast with Victor Patterson is supported by Canon Studios in Holly Springs, Georgia. Thank you all. We are out.